Well guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to another episode of AV Astronomy. I actually really wasn't planning on doing a video on this imaging session. I just was gonna, you know, sometimes it's nice to just set up and just relax and just kind of do your thing imaging, you know, but this is actually day three of me trying to get a solid amount of subframes on the Leo triplet. So that's what I'm gonna be tackling for the third time this evening. I've had two clear nights in a row, well at least starting out as clear nights, and then, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of going at it, it's it's clouding up, the skies are clouding up, and it's just not, and it's, it's crazy because the forecast doesn't show any of this at all. So anyway, that's what I've been struggling with the past couple days as far as that goes. And uh, I figure, you know what, third time's a charm, hopefully, and uh, might as well share some of my trials and successes that I've had from this session. So a little bit later this evening, we'll head to the backyard and uh, get going on this imaging session. So it's about 9.15. I've got everything wired up, as you can see here, set up and ready to go. I'm about to go ahead and get Capella uh, lined up so I can focus and then sync to that and then slew on over to the Leo triplet so we can get that going. But um, should be, fingers crossed, a good session tonight. Um, seeing conditions are average, which is great. I'll take that any day of the week. And as it stands right now, there's not a cloud in the sky. I just hope that holds off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Okay guys, so for tonight's session, the game plan is going to be ISO 3200, 90 second subframes, and that is going to be with the, the Maxis Album Newtonian, which has a focal ratio of 4.9. Um, one of the reasons I'm going with 3200 is on a recent video that I, I did uh, discussing ISO variants, I found that by after testing my camera, uh, and given my lighting situation that ISO 3200 is pretty much the sweet spot. Um, the noise levels are actually quite low at that ISO and I still have enough dynamic range to get some good color in my images so it helps me get some really fast subframes. Uh, normally I'd be sh probably shooting this uh, you know ISO 400 800 just because that's what I thought was best and it turns out um, after doing that test, the 3200 is really the better way to go, and I'm getting many more subframes. I'm, my goal here is to have about 120 subframes to stack, and if I mean if I can get 90 to 120, I'll be happy. But 120 would be awesome, and should lead to a nice uh, sharp uh, image with great signal to noise ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up here and uh, get this ball rolling. All right guys, so imaging session is underway. I think I'm probably about 20 or so subframes in. These guys are holding up clear and everything. I thought this would be a good time to kind of go over, again, some pointers, just some little tips and, and hints and tricks on uh, imaging in general and imaging this particular target. I'll start with this. Um, in this particular situation, I did not plate solve and I'll tell you why. Uh, my personal experience with APT and plate solving, I love it. I, I use it most of the time, especially if it's an obscure target that is dim and that it doesn't have a lot of bright stars around it to kind of help you align it up the old-fashioned way. Uh, but typically, what I do, you want to go right to your planetarium software. I use CDC when I'm imaging. I use Stellarium when I'm planning, <laughs> but I like to use CDC. I, I, I know they both do the same thing, but CDC just seems to be more... I don't know suited for that but anyway I polar line I go to CDC and I go to like Capella for instance this time of year uh, it's a great star to use for focusing and for synchronizing your uh, mount so I go to Capella I've just done a polar alignment only thing is I haven't done any sort of three star two star anything so it's way off it gets it gets the um, declination correct but it gets the right ascension off every time so I manually 
slew. It take, but this is relatively quick. I manually slew up to Capella. I get it in the rangefinder view. It takes me about 15 seconds, 20 seconds to do that. Get it centered in the field of view on my camera, okay, on my digital SLR, and then I go into CDC and go into the tab where I can synchronize the location that I changed from, okay. Uh, the software had me somewhere else. I moved it, centered it right, and changed the the location. Synchronize that, boom, you're you're essentially plate solved, and you can slew to your target, and it'll put it in the center of field of view. Now, in situa most situations like this, I can do that quicker than I can plate solve. It just depends on the target, but and, and what stars are available to to do that with. If there's not a bright, really, really bright star that's easy to see and line up in a, in a camera, you're just going to want to plate solve. But me personally, with a plate solving an APT, unless, it's all about field of view, right? Unless I have got my target that I'm going after to plate solve for, at least generally in the ballpark field of view, it just doesn't solve. It won't plate solve. I've sat there, it times out after like three minutes. I've sat there and tried and tried and it just times out. Um, so you got to be somewhat close to your target in the first place for the plate solving to work. But when it works, it's a gem and it's helped me in some tight spots where normally I'd have a hard time doing it the other way. But in this case, with Capella being up, I'm telling you, just polar align, manually align, go to CDC and, and slew to Capella. It's not going to slew to it, but whatever bright star you got, manual, manually align it and then synchronize that change that you just did when you manually, manually aligned it, you're good to go. Now for this particular target, the Leo triplet, I did not slew to Leo. There is a star that's pretty much in the middle, kind of, it's almost in the middle of the three galaxies that are in the Leo triplet called HD9, hold on, I think it's HD98388, okay? It, I might be off by an eight or something, but it's, it's, you, it's you'll find it in Stellarium. It's pretty much in the center, so instead of going to one of the galaxies or whatever, centered on that, and it puts it perfectly centered, at least for me, in the way I'm trying to compose this in the field of view. So there's another good tip, I think, if you're imaging Leo Triplet, go for that star, it'll center on it, you're good to go. Um, focusing, always use a Batnov mask. The Batnov mask doesn't lie. If that line is in the middle, and if you look at this graphic here, you can see what I'm talking about, you got this diffraction spike, this really cool diffraction spike pattern, and that one line that can kind of move from side to side. If that's centered, you know you're in focus. You're good to go. So use a batten off mask every time. So going back to what exposure to use, and I've got a video coming up soon, guys. I've been working on something here for you guys regarding exposure. I've come up with, I'm almost done, uh, an exposure matrix that's going to help you guys out, I think, tremendously. You know, Stay tuned for that. It's coming soon. But, um, on a previous video, I did the ISO variance test on my camera, and I found that with the Canon 77D, even though it's, it's modded, the best ISO for me to use, with the best balance of low noise and still good dynamic range, is actually ISO 3200. I never would have thought that. <laughs> I never would have, you know, grabbed this camera, oh yeah, you know, 3200, you know, everybody just, there's this stigma around higher ISO means more noise, and it's just not the case um, to a point, okay? You do start losing some dynamic range, and there's some charts that I've shown on that previous video as well that shows how that works in correlation with that, but there is a sweet spot to decent dynamic range and decrease in noise depending on what camera you have. And in the case of the Canon 77D, 3200 is the way to go. And I love that because it speeds up my exposures. I'm doing 90 second subframes right now with my Maxitov Newtonian uh, Comet Hunter Telescope. Uh, normally, I probably would have been doing this at um, 800, which if you, you do the stop count on that, 800 to 1600 is a full stop, and from 16 to 32, and you double it each time. So that would have gone from me doing 90 second subs tonight, if I'd done it the old way, I'd be doing um, 360 second subs, which are five minute, over five minutes. They're over five, you know, five and a half, whatever, 
I'm not doing the math on it right now, but they're, they're far longer than the 90 second subframes I'm doing now. And I'm getting good data doing it. So I know I took a lot of time to say all that, but it, it makes, a, I think, a very valid point and helpful point, especially if you're coming into this hobby new, guys. There's, there's so much to learn and so many hurdles. But, you know, DSLR is definitely the way to go starting out. But anyway, that's, those are my tips and advice for imaging this target and in imaging in general. Um, I will probably do another follow-up here shortly once we're a little further along in this imaging session, give you guys an update on what's going on, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so PhD has been acting really funky tonight. Um, it acts like it's losing star mass on the star that I've chosen for guiding, um, but there's not a cloud in the sky, and it's average seeing conditions. There's not heavy twinkling or anything. And it's doing it in the weird, uh, but very regular intervals of working properly for five seconds, then not for two or five, and then five on, five. Luckily, it's still tracking well enough to stay within the total RMS error uh, that I need it to. So the images are still coming out fine, but it's just kind of a, you know, one of those quirky things. It's just annoying. So, um, but anyway. I'm almost done with the session here. I think I've got about 20 more frames left and then I'll be wrapping things up for the night. We'll see what the result is and I'll post it here at the end of the video.